Hello guys, this is section 1.4. It is on rewriting formulas and equations. Uh, this will often be referred to as rewriting literal equations. Rewriting literal equations. All right, let's get started. Uh, the goal of section 1.4 is we want to be able to solve for certain variables. So oftentimes when we see an equation, uh, you'll see that a variable is solved for. It is by itself. For example, in this common equation, which you guys should remember, y equals mx plus b, the y variable is the one that is currently solved for. Y is on, by itself on one side, and everything else is on the other side of the equation. It is going to be common practice for us in Algebra 2 to say, hey, y is solved for, um, but I want x to be the thing that's solved for, so I want to get x by itself. And we are going to do this task quite often and, and try to isolate a variable that isn't isolated at the beginning. Um, literal equations, I mentioned that this is often referred to as literal equations. Literal equations are things like y equals mx plus b. Um, and you guys actually know a ton of these, but they're equations that have um, like a lot of uh, variables in them or or letters in them that you guys need to fill in. So if we just sat here and thought about it for a little while, uh, we should know like, hey, area equals length times width. Or in a circle, area equals pi r squared. Or, you know, we could have circumference equals 2 pi r. Uh, we have things like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've got all these different types of equations that just have a bunch of um, a bunch of letters in them, and for any of these equations, by the end of this year, and, and maybe even now perhaps, you should be able to pick a, a variable like r, and I should be able to say, hey, solve for r. Get r by itself. So what are the questions going to look like on your homework? They're going to look something like this, where I say, hey, solve this equation for y. As you can see, y is not currently solved for. y is over here. It is not by itself. And so your task is going to be to say, hey, get y by itself. Uh, and this is going to be the exact same process as the previous section. Uh, you're going to think about it very similarly. We have this uh, acronym SATMAP. And we solved these equations in the reverse order of PEMDAS. Okay, when you're solving, you do it in the reverse order. And when you're actually like calculating, that's when you use PEMDAS. So I want to get y by itself. Y has a couple things going on with it. Y is, has a subtract x with it. And it also, y is also being multiplied by 5. You guys see that y is being multiplied by this 5, and there's this subtract x happening to it. And so when I look to undo these things, I'm undoing them in the sad map order. I'm going to start with undoing subtraction or addition. And like I said, there is a subtract x here. I should be able to undo that subtract x. And we all should know that the way to undo a subtract x is to add x. Subtract x and add x are going to cancel. And we have 5y is equal to 13 plus x. I would like to combine those if I could, but they're not what we call like terms. So that is as simplified as I can make it, uh, except y is not yet solved for y is not by itself. It has a multiply by 5 happening to it. We should all know how to undo a multiply by 5, and that would be to divide by 5. If you divide by 5 on one side, you have to divide everything by 5. That multiply by 5 and divide by 5 cancel, and we're left with y is equal to 13 over 5 plus x over 5. And if you recall, there's like a 1 here. You could turn this into 1 fifth x if you would like. Uh, also, you should consider simplifying this fraction if you could. Uh, I did highlight in the last video that I prefer improper fractions like this one. Um, I do not want a mixed number or a decimal. I want improper fractions. With that being said, they do need to be fully reduced improper fractions. 13 over 5, uh, 13 and 5 do not have any numbers, any factors in common, so this is reduced. This would be our answer to solving for y. Or solving for y. Now there is a second part to this question. It says then find the value of y when x is negative 3, so I would have to plug negative 3 in for x, and that would be the second part. 
plugging into negative 3, I would have y is equal to 13 over 5 minus 3 over 5. 13 over 5 minus 3 over 5, well, we can do this pretty easily since we have common denominators. Uh, that would just be 10 over 5, 13 minus 3. 10 over 5 is 2, so y would be 2. Uh, pause it here and give this one a try. It's a similar level question, uh, and then I'll go over it. Once again, we are solving for y. That means we need to get y by itself. Uh, thinking back to sad map, we want to undo the subtraction or addition first, and there is uh, this 3x that is being added or subtracted to the y. We know that to get rid of a 3x, a positive 3x, we would subtract 3x. And now y is being multiplied by 2, and the way to undo and multiply 2 would be to divide by 2. If I divide by 2 on one side, I have to divide by 2 on every side. Multiply by 2 and divide by 2 cancel. We have y is equal to, we know what 12 over 2 is. We do need to simplify this in order to get full credit. 6 minus 3 halves x. So those two were similarly leveled questions uh, about the same level of difficulty. This one is a little bit more challenging. And if we look at the question, we should be able to identify what makes this one different than the last problem. And that is the fact that we have multiple x's in this question. We still only have the one y, which doesn't really make this question more difficult, um, but it appears to be more difficult. Our first step would be to add this x over, right? We're trying to solve for y. Y has a subtract x happening to it and a multiply by 2x. So our first step is going to be to add x. We would have 3 plus x is equal to 2xy. Now what is happening to y? It's being multiplied by 2x. And we know how to undo a multiply by 2x. We should be dividing by 2x. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. What we end up with here is 2's cancel, the x's cancel. We have a y. In this side, uh, we have a 3 over 2x plus x over 2x. This is one way to write it, and this is uh, the same, and I would encourage you guys to follow this. Um, and you can even think of it back here. When you divide by 2x, you have to divide everything by 2x. All right, uh, there is a little bit of simplification that can happen here. This x, we have an x in our numerator and an x in our denominator. Those can just cancel. So what that would then look like would be y is equal to 3 over 2x. That x and that x, like I said, cancel. So we still have a 2 in our denominator. Uh, and then people sometimes get kind of lost at what should go here. Keep in mind, uh, there would have been a 1 here right in front of the x. So we can carry that 1 down. So we have 3 over 2x plus 1 half, and that would be um, us solving for y. Then we have to plug 2 in and see what we get um, for the second part of the question. What that would end up being is 3 fourths plus 1 half, right? And we could do this uh, with our calculators or in our head. Uh, 1 half is the same as 2 fourths, right? Uh, that's an unreduced one half and two fourths are the same. So then I could add our numerators and get five fourths. Like I said, you can do that in your calculator. That's totally fine. Our third level of difficulty is the situation where we have multiple y's. And this is a bit trickier. Uh, I think uh, the first variety where there was just one x and one y um, is the easiest, right? And then having two x's didn't really change it much. But when we have two y's, we do have to completely think about this differently. And we're going to kind of pull it into a bag of tricks that we already have learned about this year. And that is we are going to use the distributive property. Remember the distributive property, uh, I can write something up here. Uh, it looks like a times b plus c is equal to ab plus ac. Notice here we have the letter a twice. And here we only have 
the letter A once. That's kind of the trick that we're going to be using. We have the letter Y here twice. We don't really want to have two Ys. We want to have one Y like all the other examples. So we can use the distributive property, but in reverse. So here is what we have. We have multiple Ys in our problem. We're going to write the Y out in front of the parentheses. And then whatever is left behind is going to go in the parentheses. So that would be 2 plus x. You guys should be able to think about this backwards as well. We should be able to go in reverse and say uh, if we distributed this, pro this y back in, we should get here. We should be able to undo this step because the distributive property works here to here or here to here. You guys are used to going from here to here. But in this problem, we're going to do it in reverse. Uh, we have two y's. We're going to write the y up front, and then whatever was connected to the y's goes in the parentheses. Now we can say, hey, what's happening to y? Well, y is being multiplied by 2 plus x. How do we undo a multiply by 2 plus x? We would divide by 2 plus x. And if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other side. Those cancel. We're left with y is equal to 6 plus 2 over, or 6 over 2 plus x. Now it comes to, so that's our answer to part A. We do have to plug in negative 3 into our value for x. What we end up with is y is equal to 6 over 2 minus 3, or plus a negative 3, that's the same. So 6 over negative 1, y is equal to negative 6. Let's do one more of those, and then we will call it. Uh, this is the same thing. Go ahead and pause it. Try it on your own, and then we'll go over it. Once again, we're solving for y. We notice, hey, there's two y's. I can't. I got to fix that problem. So what you do is you undo the distributive property. Write the y out front. When you take out a y, whatever is left behind, which is going to be this 4 minus x, is going to go in the parentheses. And that's equal to 28. Now y is being multiplied by 4 minus x. How do we undo a multiply by 4 minus x? We divide by 4 minus x. If you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other. Those cancel. Left with y is equal to 28 over 4 minus x. That is one answer. For our second answer, we are going to have to plug negative 3 in. What we end up with would be y is equal to 28 over 4 minus uh, negative 3. 4 minus a negative 3 is, of course, 7. 28 over 7 is 4. So uh, that's what we have for section 1.4. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.